So today's date is March 1st, 2021, and I'll be going on campus for the first time to have um, on-campus classes. So I'm packing my lunch and getting ready to start my day. Our first day of classes was originally supposed to be February 22nd, 2021, but because of the snowstorm and people not having power and water and food and everything, um, campus was closed. And so now our first day is today. So I just got to campus and before we get out of our car, we have to put on our PPE. So our mask, our face shield, um, we don't have to put on our gloves. We have to wear gloves inside, but um, we get a pair once we get into the classroom. All right, first day of on campus class is the building. We have to do a campus entry screening, basically saying that we aren't positive for COVID and everything. And we all have like different, uh, Arrival times. My arrival time is 8:20. Our class starts at 8:30, so there's arrival times at 8, 8:10, 8:15, 8:20, 8:20, and then there's a break, and then the other half of our class arrives at like I don't remember the other times, but we'll swap back and forth. And so we have to check in and show our barcode saying that we've been cleared. And hold on, but we have a barcode that shows we've been cleared, and then it takes our temperature when we get in, and then we get to go to our section. Clear to go. Got my wristband for the day. And now to class. Before we get started doing the transfer from the wheelchair to the bed, I'm going to put on this gate belt, and this is where I'll be um, holding on to her to provide stability as we transfer and to help her stand up and things like that. And I will say there's a lot of things that I did wrong throughout this um, video and I'll try to point them out. For example, what we're doing right now, the bed was up too high. And so if she wasn't an able-bodied person, then that would have been dangerous for her to go up that high um, unsteadily. So I lowered the bed and we redid it. And this is called the lateral swing where they um, turn their head away from their hips and swing themselves from the wheelchair to the bed. And for someone who's independent, they could do this at home by themselves um, without a therapist there. This next one, I turned her feet in the direction we were going. But I couldn't remember what to do with her arms. And so we we're trying to figure that out. But then I remembered they go in her lap. What I did next, I'd automatically fail on a test and I'll explain why soon. So I forgot to check to make sure that my bed was locked, which is an automatic fail, because if you try to transfer somebody to an unstable surface, there's no telling how that could go. So yeah, that's an automatic fail if I were to do that on a test. So the next technique, we're using the slide board, and this would be for someone who has good upper body strength, and I would basically just help them um, slide across the board from the wheelchair to the um, bed. So we just did seated transfers, so now we're going to do standing transfers out of the wheelchair, and I'm putting the gate belt back on. Um, Right here, you see me sitting on the bed, and that's not something we're supposed to do like with the actual patient or during a test. One, because if you're in a hospital, you don't want some random person sitting on your bed, but two, you don't know if the person used the bathroom or something like that, and now you just sat in whatever they left as a surprise in the bed. So yeah, don't sit on the bed. I'm glad I recorded because a lot of these, especially with the standing, I don't have enough contact with her her knee like to make sure she doesn't fall. Like with standing, you're supposed to like give them space to actually move, but you still want to provide stability. And it doesn't look like I'm giving enough um, stability for them to be protected if something were to go wrong. And there's different scenarios. Like you can see I'm standing by like one leg where you'll protect one leg versus the other or both legs, depending on how strong they are, depending on what the surgery they're recovering from, things like that. So it's different things that come into play that determine how you will go about transferring them while standing. In this scenario, she's had a below the knee amputation. And so we're going to stand and basically hop over to the bed. And so I protect the other leg and then we hop around, make sure she's stable. But I still could have provided some more contact to make sure that she didn't fall over if she actually didn't have a, another leg to support herself. 
So next Monday, which is March 8th, we're going to have a practical in this class, which is basically we'll get to draw um, a random piece of paper and I have a scenario for the patient and for the physical therapist. And me as a patient, I mean, me as a physical therapist, I'll have to perform whatever it is that the paper says um, with those regulations or whatever. So right now I'm just getting her name and date of birth, introducing myself and going through the informed consent like I've done in some of my other videos. And now I'm just reading off my scenario to make sure I go about this correctly. So the gist of my scenario is she's a quadriplegic. So meaning she doesn't have any um, control over her limbs and we're going to get her from the wheelchair to the bed. But this is different for me because while we were practicing, most of the time we've been doing where a patient can help us in some way. They have either upper or lower body strength. They can, they can do something. But with a quadriplegic, you can't ask them, oh, can you scoot up? You have to do that for them. You can't ask them, um, oh, can you put pressure here? Um, things like that. So I have to be more mindful because I'm used to a able-bodied person versus someone who is weak and doesn't have the control that I'm used to working with. And I said all that and you can still see that my partner was still helping me a little bit. Like she was moving out the way or lifting her arms and stuff. But with the quadriplegic, they wouldn't be able to do that. So I would have to do all of that myself and still do so safely and make sure like they were supported and I stayed in contact with them. The patient was also given directions on how to act. Like So she was told not to provide any um, help and just be really weak and um, not very verbal throughout the process. Right here, I was asking, was she okay, if she was feeling dizzy or anything, sitting up in the chair. And then I was just, like I said, going back over my scenario. And then I was trying to game plan because, like I said, I've been used to someone who could do certain things. So I was trying to figure out what would be the best method to get her from the chair to the bed. So since she has very weak extremities, I'm scooting her forward in the chair. And then I'm going to use the head to hip um, method where I'm going to put her head on my hip. And I'm going to rock her back and forth. And then we're going to get her in this uh, position from the wheelchair to the bed. And right here again, I'm only like protecting one leg. And I think I was supposed to have both of her legs in between mine for protection. So that's another thing I need to focus on. And once I got her in the bed, I asked was she okay and um, feeling stable. And I made sure to keep contact with her um, while I'm talking to her. Because if I let her go and she fell over, then... That would be a fail um, for the practical, but also in real life, she could just fall over or something like that. So I make sure to stay contacted throughout the whole process. I had to stop and game plan again because normally with a patient, you can ask them, oh, put your arm up while I lay you down, this and the other. But I couldn't do that for her. And I didn't want to just plop her down on the bed. But that's really all I could do was just guide her safely down to her shoulder and then guide her onto her back. And you see, I left her legs bent. And then she kind of just flops them down. I was supposed to put her legs down because she's quadriplegic. So she doesn't have any control over her limbs. So that was something I need to make sure I do as well. In the scenario, she also had sores under her right elbow and her left heel. So I made sure to put a towel, or an invisible, invisible, invisible towel under her elbow and heel so that wouldn't get further irritated. And then I took off the gate belt and I'm putting the rails up, the imaginary rails on the side of her bed. And before you leave, you're supposed to give them a call button in case they need help. And I tried to hand it to her, but she can't use her arm. So I really didn't know where to put it. So I just pretended to sit it inside her hand in the grip. So hopefully if she needed me, she could call me or yell if that it came to that point. I was going to show you all the actual like scenarios we had, but I don't think I'm allowed to. So I gave you all the gist um, throughout the video. We were in the middle of lunch, and we thought we had till 12.30. We really had till 12 o'clock. So we had to run back, and now we got to go change and get ready for our next class. So here we go. First day on campus in the books. Whoa! All right, so I just got home, finished for the day. Well, I'm not finished for the day. I have tutoring at 5.30, and we have a test tomorrow at 9, so I'm going to study for that. But my first day on campus went really well. I wish that we had been on campus because I learned more today than I have in the past, however many weeks it's been. And it's not 
the teachers or anything it's me i'm a hands-on person and so i really enjoyed the being able to do things and get feedback on it in person in real time because i feel like i learn better when i make mistakes and then i remember like oh this is what i was doing and this is what i need to do and so um on zoom our professors have been giving us feedback but it's kind of hard to see everything because they can say oh yeah that's right but you might be in the general area but not like actually doing what you need to do and so i liked having that face-to-face -face component versus through zoom um my first class in the morning was patient and client care management and the main things we did were um transfers and bed mobility um so being able to move up and down the bed after surgery or something like that or side to side um and knowing what type of movement you do depending on what's wrong so if somebody had an amputation you wouldn't move them in the same way as a person who um didn't have an amputation or had hip surgery versus knee surgery. So we did that and also um, transferring to and from a wheelchair um, to get them to the bathroom or get them downstairs to the gym to do physical therapy. You have to know like what their amount of strength is and also same thing, you couldn't transfer somebody who's had an amputation or had an, a spinal injury, you wouldn't do those the same way. So that's what we focused on today in patient client care management. I didn't really record in soft tissue intervention because it was a lot going on. But yeah, soft tissue, we did um, massages on the upper and lower extremities, so the upper and lower arm. And we also had a skills check off. Basically, um, we had, before this week, we had done massages for the back and the neck in cervical region and so for the skill check off they can pick any of the skills that we've learned for those and ask us to perform it um in my other videos i did the the back massage i didn't do a, a neck massage video um but yeah so we were doing a lot in that class and also we thought we had lunch at 12 30 but really had we thought we had lunch until 12 30 but really we had lunch until 12 o'clock so at 12 o'clock we were still eating lunch and one of our classmates luckily were like um we, we were all supposed to be back at 12 o'clock so we hurried up and got upstairs and then had to go change our clothes and everything because for soft tissue we um i had on scrubs for my first class and the second class we had to wear a t-shirt and shorts to be able to get to the parts of the body that we needed so luckily my classmate was looking out for us because we would have got back at 12 30 and missed half the class so yeah soft tissue was that was the gist of it and then after that we stayed and were able to practice anything else we wanted to practice so yeah that was my day thanks for watching